Well, a lot of folks are talking Cinderella story coming out of Salt Lake, and uh, Mr. Upstone and I are going to talk about that and their opener at Florida coming up on Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern time in the swamp in Gainesville. He's Doug Upstone. I'm Scott Sprite, so we are DocSports.com. We'll get to the game in just a second. First, a quick note. See the banner up above your screen there? It says get a free $60 account. The link is located below the video. All you got to do if you want to jump on board and be a part of the trial for yourself at DocSports.com, the trial run. You click on that link below the video. You get yourself set up for a free $60 account, and you can use those free 60 bucks on any of Doug Upstone's daily packages or any of mine. It is as simple as that. It's the Utes at Florida, Mr. Upstone. The game kicking off, as I mentioned, 7 o'clock Eastern in the swamp. Uh, Utah laying three, total 51 as we cut this video. Listen, I'm looking at last year, and I'm seeing Florida – Packing it in, not looking good down the stretch. Dan Mullen's gone. He gets the boot. He really didn't do a good job of recruiting, by the way, as far as I thought when he was at Florida. Not a bad X's and O's guys, but didn't bring in the kind of players we're used to seeing in Florida Gator uniforms. Uh, so it left him a bit depth shy. And that includes going into this season, Doug, in Gainesville. It's going to take a little while to, to replenish. You could have had Utah, though, at a pick. They're now laying three. As of Wednesday morning, three days before kickoff, about 60% of the tickets are on the Pac-12 entry, the Utah Utes. I got to ask you right off the top, are you in agreement with those 60% of the folks that have plunked their money down and that line moving to three? Are you looking to go the other way and maybe now grab the points with a team that has been unbelievably strong at home over the years? Yeah, I, I, I'm inclined to, even though, you know, uh, like the other video that we talked about, is that I, if if Utah won the game, I can't say I'd be surprised, but three seems like kind of a big number. And, you know, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of, of Whittingham, their coach. I think he's done a tremendous job. He's been there a super long time. And one of the things that I've been most impressed upon with him, I should say, is that what whatever the need that comes up, he finds a way to fix it. And so, you know, when he when they first took over, when he first took over, and they went to the Pac-12 and all that, they were too slow. So, you know, through time, they got faster. Then, as, as things came about, then they got, you know, were a contender in their division. Well, then they got, you know, they continued to get more speed at certain positions, which was a big plus. Then they needed a quarterback last year, okay, that could throw the ball around the field. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? They found one in Cameron Rising, and he, he did a great job. 20 touchdown passes, just five interceptions. And, you know, I mean, Ohio State was better in the Rose Bowl, but, boy, they got pushed, okay? And yeah. they got pushed by a good Utah team. So I think this team is legit, uh, you know, but they haven't been great on the road the last couple of years. I believe that they're – two and eight recently uh, straight up against teams with winning records. So that's a concern to me. Like you said, Florida doesn't have great depth, but the, boy, do they have a nice looking quarterback in Anthony Richard. So what, what do you think about Florida in this one? Yeah, I, I like the hire to Billy Napier. I think it was a great hire. We'll see if that turns out to be the case. Uh, but he yeah. had that Rage and Cajun program, which was a losing program. I, I read somewhere, and I forget who's whose write-up it was, another handicapper. I'm trying to go. Anyway, I'd like to give them credit, but I'm just spacing it off right now, so I don't want to give credit to the wrong person. But they were talking about how their uh, win percentage uh, in their history before Napier arrived being about, you know, 430 or thereabouts. Okay. Napier comes along, and all of a sudden they're winning 10 games every year like it's nothing. And so he did a great job there. He brings in a bunch of assistants uh, from that old job. He brings in players from that old job. And – the players that he's bringing in obviously are not typical Gator type recruits. They're not four stars. They're not five stars, but they are players who bought into Napier, his assistant coaches, and they are very familiar with what Napier wants to have done. So that boosts them for maybe a two or a three star, maybe up a half a star or so, maybe a full star. Uh, when you want to break it all down from that perspective and say they know what wants to be done by their coaching staff and they've gone out and they've accomplished it before and they've totally bought into what he's doing. So there is that. Uh, Utah getting a ton of hype, 14 returning starters, eight offense, six defense. You mentioned Cam, Cam Rising. We talked about two games today. We talked about, you know, the Ohio State-Notre Dame game that C.J. Stroud is going to be sitting in New York waiting to see, hear if his name's going to be called for the Heisman Trophy. Cam Rising could very well be there also, especially if they get off to a good start and end up where a lot of people think they're going to be. They think this is going to be the team that is the fourth team to make it into the playoffs along with Bama, uh, Ohio State, maybe Georgia or Clemson. 
I'm not sure that I'm ready to have the Utes playing for a national title yet, but I do believe they can eke out a win on Saturday night. And I'll get to my thoughts on that again in just a second. Uh, as far as Florida, they got a quarterback, as you mentioned. He's quite mobile. He can move. He's only thrown 64 passes. The one thing I saw out of Utah last year on defense, whenever they went up against a mobile quarterback, they slammed the door. I mean, they were not letting mobile quarterbacks beat them on the ground. So there is that in the favor of the Utah Utes. Utah's going to be very good. You mentioned Whittingham, and I did want to say this real quick because it was something you said that made me think about this. Whittingham has done a ridiculously great job with this program. They came into the Pac-12. They were bullies. You know, they were, what, big fish in a little pond in the Mountain West. But I got to tell you, and I used to go to all the UNLV home games, dirtiest football team I've ever seen was when the Utah Utes were being coached by Urban Meyer. I'm telling you right now, it was the oh. dirtiest football team I've ever seen. You know, they were giving them the business under the pile. They were doing all that stuff. They were, I'm kidding when I say they're sticking out their legs, their feet, when guys are running down the sideline in front of their sideline. But it was almost that bad. 15-yard penalties being called, guys being grabbed underneath the pile. Very dirty football team. They've changed, and they still are rough and tough, and you don't want to face this team if you don't have to. But Whittingham, I think, has done a very good job getting the Utah Utes back uh, where they really wanted to be when Urban Meyer left. So there is that. And I'll tell you, it's not an easy job because look at Colorado. They got to the Pac-12. Colorado's not been able to figure it out. They went through a few coaches. Now they're going to be lucky if they win more than two games this particular season. And by the way, Whittingham's being mentioned in Lincoln right now as a possible successor for Mr. Frost. I don't think he's going to go there. I think there's a, a couple of other coaches who are going to be more likely to accept that job if they're offered. I think Whittingham's pretty happy being in Salt Lake. So having said all of this, I'm going to wrap it up by saying I think Utah does win the game, but I think it's by a field goal, Doug. And you know, I, the total's 51. I lean towards the under. So if I had to make a play on this game, it would be under 51 because I think you're going to see two coaches who are going to run want to run the football a little bit more than pass the football. I think that's what you're going to see. So I think the game's going to land under the total. I think Utah's going to win by three. So I'd pick them. I would have said if we were talking about this a couple weeks ago, I mean, Utah at three, I just say, you know what? Utah gets a field goal win. The game stays under the total. Yeah, well, and, and to your point, the I guess you could bring up the, the point of special teams early in the year because everybody has a problem with special teams. So you got a three-point game. Well, guess what? One extra point uh, from that's missed by either team or blocked or whatever changes the whole dynamic of the outcome. Sure. So from that standpoint, I'm going to say that the, I'm going to say that Florida, I'm going to take Florida with plus the three, believing that they can get the job done. And they could well lose the game. But I agree with you, Scott. I think this is going to be a rock'em, sock'em, tough football game. And whoever is able to impose their will at the line of scrimmage, not so much the passing game, but by the running game, I think that's going to be your winner. So, And I'm going to say from a point spread standpoint, I'm going to take Florida plus the points in this one and see what happens. Doug likes Florida plus the points. I'm saying take the under parley time. Anyway, <laughs> hey, don't forget about that free $60 account. Check it out. Click on that link below the video. Check out DocSports.com all week long. And by the way, I wanted to mention, I love saying this on my Thursday videos. Obviously, we're doing this on Wednesday night. Uh, but I love to say it's football Thursday at DocSports.com. And it will be by the time a lot of people watch this video because our plays, Doug's, mine, everybody else on the roster, at DocSports.com. We'll have all of their college football plays for the weekend up and available on Thursday afternoon, so you can check that out if you wish. He's Doug Upstone. I'm Scott Spritzer. We are DocSports.com. Let's put them in the win column, everybody.